everybody, it's Dee Dee here from StampinWithDeeDee.com. I hope you're having a great week. Since Easter is coming up next weekend, I have a super easy last minute Easter project to share with you today. This adorable miniature Easter basket. This basket is made with the lawn chair die from the Seasonal Layers Framelits die set by Stampin' Up. It's just big enough to hold one Cadbury cream egg and only takes a few minutes to make. So even if you're short on time, you could easily make a dozen of these to share with your family and friends before the holiday. The original idea for this basket comes from Babette at sincerelybabette.blogspot.com. I saw her darling basket on Pinterest and just knew I had to give it a try and share it here with you so that you could try it too. Here are the supplies you'll need to make this project. You'll need your seasonal layers frameless die set and your Big Shot or another die cutting machine. You'll also need some cardstock or designer paper, your paper trimmer with a scoring blade or another scoring tool, scissors, about 16 inches of ribbon, and some adhesive. The first thing you need to do to make this Easter basket is cut four of the lawn chair dies from cardstock or designer paper with your Big Shot or other die cutting machine. I've been using the pre-made cards from the Tutti Frutti Celebration Cards and Envelope set to make my baskets and I'll make one in Calypso Coral today. Since the lawn chair die is an intricate die, you'll want to use your thin die adapter with your Big Shot cutting machine. So in terms of the plate stack, just lay the thin die adapter on top of the basic platform, then lay the first cutting plate on top, then layer your cardstock on top of the cutting plate, and lay your die on top of the cardstock and position it where you want it. Once you have your die where you want it, go ahead and lay the second clear plate on top of the whole stack and you're ready to cut. Once you get the die cuts all cut out, go ahead and pull out your paper trimmer. We need to cut a couple of pieces for the basket. First, you need to cut a two and a half by two and a half inch square piece for the basket base. You can make this out of the same paper you use to die cut your chairs or some other contrasting color or pattern. I'm just using the same one that I've already used. Once you get that cut out, set it aside for a moment because you're gonna to wanna to make the basket handle. Now this needs to measure one half inch by seven inches. So I'm just aligning it up with that one half inch line on the cutter. And then I will rotate it and cut it at the seven inch mark. And then you can go ahead and set this piece aside. Now grab the square cardstock piece that you cut for the basket base and you're gonna just wanna score it one half inch in from each of the four sides. So you can see I'm using my Stampin' Up! trimmer which also has a scoring blade and I'm just aligning each side at the half inch mark and then scoring and then rotating to the next side, realigning and scoring again until I get that half inch score line on all four sides of the square. So now notice how on your scored cardstock piece, the horizontal and vertical score lines meet to form these little squares in the corners of the paper. What you're gonna do is pick two opposing sides of the square and then position your scissors on the vertical score lines and then just cut straight up till it meets that first horizontal score line. And turn it around and do it on the opposite side. Again, cut straight up on that vertical score line just to free up those little squares and turn them into tabs that you'll use to assemble this little base for your basket. Next, you just want to fold up each of the sides and tabs along those score lines to crease them and then unfold them again. Once you've got all the sides creased, fold just the little tabs up so that the front of the paper is facing up and then you want to add some adhesive to each little tab. I'm just using some snail adhesive here because this is a tiny little basket and it's only going to hold one little candy egg 
so this is enough to keep this basket together but if you wanted to you could use a stronger adhesive if you plan to put something a little heavier in your basket next fold up the two untaped sides of your paper and then tuck and press the taped tabs up against them this will seal up the sides to form a box shape that you'll use as the base for your little Easter basket. Now you'll want to attach one die cut lawn chair to each side of the box. I recommend using liquid glue for this, like the Tombow multi-purpose glue that Stampin' Up! offers. Since the lawn chair bases are so small, most dry adhesives are just too thick to use. This Tombow adhesive dries fast but not super fast so if you use it you will have enough time to add glue to all four chair pieces before you stick them to your box once you've got glue on all four of your chair pieces just go ahead and put your glue away and then attach one chair piece to each side of the box align the base of the chair with the bottom line of that box piece and then press and hold for just a moment to give the Tombow glue a chance to really grip onto the box. You might also want to pay attention to where you're putting your hands when you're putting this box together. Notice how I just stuck my hand right onto that chair piece. Oh well, it held it nicely for me until I needed it. Now that the basket base is finished, let me show you an easy way to decorate it before you attach the handle. Since there's a little bit of space between the slats on these chair dies, I thought it would be fun to string some ribbon through them. So to get some ribbon to match my basket, I took some of this Whisper White Organza ribbon that's available in the Occasions catalog and then just dyed it to match the handle on my basket. Since I want to be able to tie a bow with the two ends of the ribbon when I'm finished, I'm going to start by inserting one end of the ribbon to the left of the tallest slat on the front of this chair die. Then I'm just gonna weave that end of the ribbon in and out between these chair slats until I reach that space to the left of the tallest slat on the front of that chair die where I started. And then I'll just pull the ends of the ribbon through that last slat. This is by far the slowest part of making this basket. And if you don't have the patience for it, there are many other ways that you could decorate yours. In her original version, Babette just made a little paper bow with our envelope punch board and attached that to the front of the basket. Once you have the ribbon woven all the way through the basket, go ahead and just tie those two loose ends into a bow. You can see I'm tying my bow upside down. For some reason, I find that when I tie my bows this way, they always come out looking just a little bit nicer. Once you've got your bow tied, use some scissors to trim the ends of the ribbon so that they look a little more finished. Now the last thing you need to do to finish your Easter basket is attach the handle. I find that in order to keep the handle from creasing when I'm attaching it, it helps if I just sort of run my fingers along the inside until I get a little bit of a curve going on it. To attach the handle to the basket, you want to use a stronger adhesive than just snail tape runner or liquid glue. This way, if somebody decides to pick up the basket by the handle, the handle doesn't instantly pull away. Here I'm using some tear and tape, which is the double-sided sticky tape that Stampin' Up! offers but you could also use fast fuse or something else equally strong. Now just attach those taped ends to the inside of the basket by pressing them to opposite sides of the basket base. Make sure the ends are seated all the way down near the bottom of the basket base and that they're pressed firmly to the sides so that they'll really hold. Isn't that a sweet little basket? To finish your basket, just fill it with some paper grass and then tuck your Easter tree inside. I put a chocolate Cadbury cream egg inside each of mine. I really like this little chick image that's on the front of those eggs, so I made sure that I rotated the egg so that the chick would be peeking out. 
and now you have a finished basket. These little baskets are just so easy to make. I can't wait to share the ones I made and hope you'll have fun making some too. The Stampin' Up! products that I used in this video are available 24-7 through my online shop and are linked in the description below. If you enjoy this tutorial, please don't forget to click like and subscribe to my channel for more stamping tutorials and inspiration. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below or visit my website at stampinwithdeedee.com for more information. Until next time, happy stamping!